37, live from Bufaco Mancha the Day in the beautiful Barcelona. And I'm here with Leo from Erica Sins. Welcome. Thank you. We saw a really exciting presentation yesterday about what you guys are working on. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about this collaboration uh, with Moritz Klein, or the inspiration, rather? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's a DIY series. Uh, and. Uh, you know, most modular companies, including Befico and Erica, since we've started as uh, we started as you know DIY companies, we made DIY modules. And uh, Dirz, our founder, like he got into modular by just getting DIY kits and uh, building uh, like so many of them that <laughs> someone online told him that man, like there's nothing left for you to build anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so it's it's sort of like a throwback to that because we used to have a DIY series, but we discontinued it. Okay. And, uh, because most uh, DIY modules are, you know, you have a, a ready-made uh, module that, you know, you have instructions for, you assemble and, and it works, but you don't always fully understand what it does or why and how. So, so this is uh, slightly different. It's an educational series. And since Moritz Klein uh, runs an educational YouTube channel on the electronics behind Eurorack, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice uh, to be able to make a series which are uh, very... Uh, very simple to build and uh, we will also include uh, documentation for I think it's like I don't want to be mistaken but at least 10 pages per module I think describing the functionality and diving not only into how it functions as a Eurorack module but more into its uh, the principles of you know basic electronics and uh, sort of you know the the goal of uh, encouraging young people to uh, look more into physics and engineering excellent yeah modular for dummies well, sort of, but not only for dummies. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm that dumb, but I'm not an engineer. Even for musicians, like, I think it's valuable to understand the type of instruments they're using and to be able to service them, repair them, and to understand, in principle, how something works. Absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, that's always fascinated me as an individual, and I, I feel like many people are the same. Absolutely, so. yeah. Uh, Mid-December is when we release the series officially. Uh, it's going to be eight modules. They're separate uh, DIY kits. So we're going to have a VCO, VCA, VCF, envelope generator, a noise sample and hold uh, uh, generator, a mixer, an output, and a very simple sequencer. Okay. And there, we're also going to release a case for all of this, a like Lego-style case with a built-in power supply. So, you know, it's going to be uh, very accessible, and it's finally going to give many uh, people who begin modular or electronics, like, the ability to actually... Uh, you know, assemble this full synthesizer for a you know relatively inexpensive uh, price point, because uh, even for me personally, like the way I got into uh, Eurorack uh, and modular was through VCV Rack, okay. the open source software, and uh, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it, it never taught me the principles of the electronics behind them, and uh, mm -hmm. so it's nice that you know uh, a hands-on approach exactly a hands-on yeah. approach tactile format and the mm -hmm. ability to actually patch and to to modulate uh, the actual parameter knobs themselves, not just mm -hmm. digitally clicking them on a screen. And mm -hmm. Kind of a starter pack with the ability to expand it as well. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just standard Eurorack modular, mm -hmm. so you can uh, patch them in with you know, whatever Anything. other gear you have. Even if you have like a, a lot of modules and you just need some more VCAs, you know, you can just get our DIY VCAs, build them and just put them in your rack. And, mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned this being a really educational kind of experience. Mm -hmm. How would you like to see that integrated? Was there a possibility of working with certain institutions or marketing to a specific um, genre or niche well I mean that would be wonderful to like have it uh, available have these uh, kits available in schools and like uh, I don't know physics classes music classes uh, you know as, as uh, yeah as an educational tool for uh, children even uh, mm -hmm. not just uh, young adults but like uh, the, the kits are so simple that uh, children can actually learn how to build uh, electronics and yes, uh, integrating them with uh, educational, uh, within educational institutions, uh, that would be a beautiful thing we'd like to see in the future. Yeah, I just finished conservatory mm. and there's a live electronics department that's uh, mm. blossoming right now, but they don't really have any specific programs, so it's shooting in the dark. I would love to see this implemented in certain conservatory settings. Yeah, well, we're, we're not educators. <laughs> we are, after all, synth builders, but... But you know, tool givers. Yes, so at least mm -hmm. we can provide the tools to uh, those uh, enthusiastic and capable and, and uh, themselves educated enough to uh, uh, mm -hmm. help others grasp this, uh, this field. Mm. Exciting. And can you tell me a little bit more about the in how the inspiration from Moritz Klein came to be, how you got in contact? Well, and that, how that progression uh, <laughs> those are Those are questions for Dirz, because Dirz is our, uh, 
he, he is our visionary. He, he finds these collaborations and uh, makes, uh, makes friends and he's a very open person. So the, he probably is a fun story about how, how, how it all happened, but I won't be able to answer that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll hunt him down then. At some point. <laughs> it seems that the popularity of Erica Synth is largely due to uh, its open source materials. How has that evolved and shaped in the company? It's still like uh, the DIY like kits are open source, and we're always very open to uh, uh, you know people experimenting and, uh, and building their own stuff. That hasn't changed because we're uh, the reason we stopped the DIY series had a lot to do with you know the old DIY series was uh, the nightmare of supporting it. You know, okay. like when. Uh, it's it's hard to tell if the the fault was within the kit or you know if it was a mistake uh, building it and and uh, so this time it's a lot simpler and a lot easier to to work with and uh, but our, our philosophy towards uh, the open source hasn't changed we're very much like uh, supportive and always uh, will <laughs> love the DIY community which is where our roots uh, come from but uh, but we're also like uh, we're a Euro right company uh, first. But uh, now we're moving more into the direction of making standalone instruments. Okay. So like uh, that, that's uh, that's been like a priority for us over the past year or so. We're releasing a new drum synthesizer we demoed in Superbooth, and uh, we just recently made the LXR, which is actually yeah, it was also a, the 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 original LXR was a, a DIY kit made by a, a German guy, Julian, mm -hmm. Julian Schmidt, and uh, and now we're uh, we collaborated with him and made the second version of this but now it's no longer DIY now it is an actual uh, you know a play like fully assembled playable instrument uh, okay. out of the factory but our, our philosophy towards DIY hasn't changed like at all it's just that we're also making more uh, standalone instruments but that those two worlds aren't really clashing in our opinion yeah they can work alongside each other mm. what's the um, what exciting projects are you working on in, in these standalone instruments right now is there anything in particular you'd well, like to share about well, like, like I said the, the main thing is the, the big the big one the uh, the Parkons, uh, drum mm -hmm. synth we demoed in Superboot uh, that that one will uh, will release before the end of this year so we're very very busy uh, like uh, finalizing it and getting everything worked out and and, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, production going. In future, we're going to be looking towards other, like, uh, instruments, uh, something with keys as well, okay. which is going to be a new thing for us. And uh, we have one addition, uh, though, to uh, our Pico series of modules, which will release sometime next year. Uh, I, I teased it yesterday. Yeah, and, uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we call it the Pico Wav. It's a 3 HP module, which... Uh, bears similarity to our sample drum, so it's a, a sample playback module, but uh, unlike the sample drum, it doesn't load the samples into RAM, it reads them directly off the SD card, so you can have basically unlimited sample playback length, and it also allows for, uh, 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 like, it has a single output channel, but when it plays back samples, it can play, start a sample when the previous one is still playing, so effectively you can use it, like, to play a whole... Uh, like a percussive, uh, like say techno set with just one module. So layering capability. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's and very exciting. And we're also releasing an expander for it, which is going to have like, uh, to, like so the module is two assignable CVs, uh, an output, and uh, and like yeah, many of the sample drum functions. But just the fact that it's unlimited, it's uh, we were joking that it's also the perfect instrument for when you mess up in a live set and you don't know where to go, and you can just like load up a, a ready a whole set and just play it from the module with one mag manual trigger push, and no one will notice. That's absolutely perfect. As a classical musician, I am so jealous of that. I wish I could have someone like ready with the second bassoon behind me just to step in and you know the blonde wig, everything. Yes, yes. It's perfect. Well, I'm really excited about your projects. Uh, thank you so much, Leo, and uh, it was a pleasure uh, hearing from you. Yeah. Oh, thank you.